Hello, operators. If you woke up this morning, started up FT8 call, and got this message, it's time to update to the latest version. Generally speaking, this is pretty easy, but I'm going to show you how I do it on a Raspberry Pi. All right, let's go. The very first thing we do is head over to the FT8 call group at groups.io and head to the download section. Since I'm on a Raspberry Pi and I want this to be as easy as possible, I'm going to select the app image for Raspberry Pi Stretch. There's also other pre-compiled FT8 call apps, so just choose the one that's right for your operating system. So I selected the app image for Raspberry Pi and you can see the download get started in the lower left hand corner of the download box. I have a pretty slow internet connection up here at 65 degrees north, so we'll just let that download and uh, we'll open the folder when the download is ready. I also noticed that the download location has changed between version 6.4 and version 6.5. We're now downloading from uh, Amazon Hosting, which should be pretty fast uh, no matter where you are around the world. So we're just about done downloading the app image. Uh, once it's finished, go ahead and open the folder and either leave it there or move it to the location where you want to run it from. So I'm just going to right click on that finished file and uh, select open in folder. If this is your first time running FT8 call on a Linux based system, there's something we have to do first. We'll need to set the permissions for running FT8 call and to do that, simply right click on the file, switch over to permissions and change execute from nobody to only owner. Then select OK and you're done. Another thing I like to do is create a shortcut to that app image onto my desktop. To do that, we're going to select the app image, then scroll up to the menu and select Edit, select Desktop, and select OK. Now you have an easy shortcut for FT8 call on your desktop. You can also do all of these things from the command line, but I suspect if you're watching this video, you're probably not an advanced user, and that's not a problem. Neither am I, so I'm showing you the easiest way to do it. To run FT8 call, all you need to do is double click on that link you made on the desktop, select Execute, wait a couple of moments, and the FT8 call app image will open. The first thing you'll see is the reminder telling you that FT8 call is a pre-released beta version and it's your responsibility to send any bugs or feedback to Jordan. We'll dismiss that and... Uh, if you've run FT8 call before on this device, your settings are already there. There's nothing left to do. If you haven't, you'll have to go ahead and go to settings and set it up. There's nothing remarkable here, but let's go through the most important of the configuration tabs. The first tab is the general tab, and this is where you're going to enter information about your station. There's also settings for your beacon and preferences for your message and activity boxes. Next we have the radio tab. This is where you select your radio, how to connect to it, and how to control it with cat control. Next we have the reporting tab for PSK Reporter and APRSIS. Next we have the frequencies tab. Now the frequencies are already pre-configured for you, but if you want custom frequencies, this is where you would edit them. This is followed up by the notifications tab. Finally, we finish up with the UI tab for user interface preferences. Once you're all set up with the correct settings, you can go ahead and uh, select the band that you want, then turn on your beacon. At some point, you'll start to see activity on the left side activity screen, and on the right side, you'll start to see beacons from other stations. I have my beacon set up for every 15 minutes. Once I enable it in the upper right hand corner, it's going to go ahead and send out in the next transmit cycle. It'll transmit two times, once for even and once for odd cycles.
If you have auto enabled in FT8 call, stations can send commands to your stations asking for additional information, for example, a signal report. That's what's happening here with Oscar November 2 Hotel Foxtrot. I think he sent out this ping to see if I can actually hear his station. Before I noticed that though, I also sent out an all call grid square sending my APRS position to APRS IS through the FT8 call app. Now before I finished up, I noticed Oscar November 2 Hotel Foxtrot Peter sent me a message. So I decided to go ahead and send him a nice return to thank him. So I choose his call sign from the list and select directed message to him. This will display a message on his screen as a pop-up. Now I'll send that off to him and wait for his return. It doesn't actually take that long for my message to go out and to receive his return. And to be quite honest, receiving his return is exactly why I continue to make these videos as often as I do. So I'd just like to say thanks to Peter for helping me start my day off in the right way. All right, operators, like, share, subscribe, and let Jordan know what you think about FT8 Call. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.